So Ollie, with your TikTok career, Mindset you, career. You, you started it off as a hobby and it's obviously not something that you turned into a financial game, but how did you navigate getting your content out there as something you weren't doing as a money project, it was just a passion? So when lockdown first happened, uh, I started making TikToks, singing as like a bit of a joke, like duetting people with my iPhone, like headphones basically. And then I was like, actually, you know, I enjoy making these videos, they're quite fun, and uploaded a couple that got like 10,000 views. And realised pretty quickly that there was definitely like an algorithm, I hadn't really thought about it too much before, but realised if I kept on making those same style videos, I was going to grow basically, like my, my views were going to grow. And I, I won't lie, I wasn't really doing it for the views and I did quite a hit and miss approach of just like throw everything and see what sticks. But I guess for me the biggest thing was just making as many videos as I could and seeing what worked and then making more of the videos that did. I'm going to the toilet first. <laughs> and isn't there meeting in there? Yeah. So why would you follow me? I was going to get the B-roll of you actually filling the water right, and stuff, well, but it's fine. No, don't worry. Three flights of stairs every morning. Do that three or four times a day whilst you're getting your coffees. 10,000 steps, no problem. What are you doing, Sam? I'm doing a terrorist job for him. Going up someone's water bowl for him. Coffee's acquired from upstairs. 100 calories burnt, 400 calories gained. Creating TikToks for clients, we've got to put out a lot of content every month. How do you keep it fresh and original and keep that content going out without it just seeming like you're a broken record? Oh, uh, repurpose it from other channels. So I have a client who started out on LinkedIn. So we have 40 LinkedIn posts, which we can then just literally get to say out loud and film. So that's already 40 TikToks done. And then you get more and more content from people's uh, comments. So you can reply to the comment with like another video and then that can gain loads of traction as well. There's loads of viral TikToks that are literally just like replies to comments. Politics is always changing, society's always changing, things, like things are always coming up in the news. So there's always things to talk about. TikTok, like all social media platforms, has evolved. So it sort of starts off with um, you've got kids, you know, messing around, posting whatever, uh, and then when people realise you could grow a massive following and monetize it, you had these influences being created out from the very young people. And the videos obviously got you know more high production, and then other people see that and go, well, I've got to compete with that, so they create high production content. But I think in 2023, especially, I think people are going to be fed up of seeing those really you know, high production quality videos. I think people want to hear from, you know, your, your average Barry who works at Audi or Jemima who likes building Legos. You know, Fat Francis Beljo is a perfect example. He got, his passion was trains. He literally just stood in front of a train, talked about it, and now he's doing ads for Gucci. So I think that's the sort of content that's going to really hit, is your average person who does their nine to five, recording what they do in their life or what they need for Gucci. So I think like everyone during lockdown, everyone was a little bit bored, everyone was doing their own thing. I started creating some content during lockdown and noticed that much like other platforms, compound growth is just the best way to improve on TikTok. You post as much as you can, something takes off, you're getting 100 views per video, then you get one that gets like 50k. Every video after that starts getting like 500 views and then you get one that gets 100k. Then every video gets 1000 views and like that. So all you have to do is just be consistent on TikTok. Not necessarily about creating a banger, but if you create one every day, you're like guaranteed to grow. I'm really fuming that I messed up that last half a second there because that was really good up until there. <laughs> There's a school trip as well. <laughs> <laughs> good work, Tarek. Good job. How is this our job? So we've got Kurt the Bear out with us. We're answering questions about KSI and basically we're almost trying to mislead the public into thinking that <laughs> the big man himself <laughs> might be underneath the costume, but it's actually not. I mean, for starters, that ain't six foot, is it? <laughs> if you follow Clout on TikTok, you might have seen that we've actually gone viral twice in the last week. And I think there are two main reasons for why we've gone viral and two things that everybody can do to go viral on TikTok. Number one, it's all about consistency. The more consistent you are on TikTok, the more likely people are to follow you and therefore keep seeing your content and therefore your content is much more likely to blow up because you're coming up in their feeds far more. And the second one is repurposing content. So if something has done well and like, 
LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever, then take that content and figure out a way to repurpose it on TikTok. So for us, it was basically just like a video of all of us in the background with some text over it that did well on LinkedIn previously. I think another thing that I noticed when we started going viral more consistently was the more our faces were in the feed and the more we were actually talking to the audience, the more likely people were to follow us. You might get random likes and random views, which is great for like the odd video, but if you want consistent views rather than getting a million and one and then 100 on the next one you need to make sure that you understand your audience and your audience are actually getting to see you and understand you whether that's your business and the culture of your business or you as an individual if you're trying to build your personal brand on tiktok so it is currently quarter to three on thursday i've been mad with sam for over 24 hours now i promised to stop being mad at him at 12 but I can currently see his face from here and he's just annoying me. So my contribution to the vlog that Sam didn't ask for is is that Sam socks. <laughs> I just, he doesn't sock really, it's great. But one of our clients went on TikTok and within the first week went from zero to 7,000 followers. Um, his best performing TikTok did so well because it could relate to so many people. It was about how long it takes you to recover from a toxic workplace. Now, he's in a space that helps leaders to make sure that their workplace isn't toxic. <laughs> but the fact that we did a really straightforward title, we researched the hashtags, and we also looked at his analytics to see when his audience were most active. It actually did really well. Don't know why I bothered though, because Sam Spencer had an aneurysm and forgot that I did TikTok strategies, so didn't ask me for my opinion.